Okay, the idea that we want to discuss today um, is the Binyan and Beit HaMikdash, that the Beit HaMikdash is for everlasting. Okay, so we know that that in the Bait Rishon, uh, the Shechina wasn't permanent in the, in the piece of land, in the dirt. The dirt didn't become holy. It was just as a result as that there was a building there that had all the requirements of the Beit HaMikdash, and the Kadosh Baruch Hu decided, determined, that that will be his resting place. But then if the building is not there, no longer is it uh, holy. But Beit uh, Sheni, it says, And that it's, the dirt became a holy piece of dirt. Haram the place of the Beit HaMikdash is a holy place. And it's regardless to if there's a building there or not. Fine. Um, I'd like to, to touch upon something very interesting. The the Rambam in general is the codifier of how how does the Beit Hamikdash take take place? How does it look? What is it? What's its functions? So he determines that the Beit Hamikdash um, is a place where it serves as to a, a place to to have sacrifice to to have sacrifices. That's that's the determination of that. that meaning that's the end goal of the it also happened to be that the Beit HaMikdash is where HaKadosh Baruch Hu's presence was in this world but the, the purpose of it was the uh, the sacrifices now the end the, the, we have in our history three points in time that there's going to be three different Beit HaMikdash one was in the first Beit and then it was destroyed and for 70 years. Then we had Koresh to build the second bait, and we had that for 410 years, and then that was destroyed as well. And we're going to have the third bait. Now, seemingly, all these batim are working independently, not one from another, and they don't have any interconnection. Um, the bait, the she, is going to be built in the times of the Motu Mashiach, and that's going to be, uh, it's called in the Zohar, a bait. Um, the previous batim are called Bait de Barnash, a man's handmade. This is going to be Bait of Kadosh Baruch who made it direct. There's a piece in the, so we know that all the, we know this regarding all the Kelim that were they were taken to the Bavel after the first Bait, the Menorah, oh, the Mizbeach, the Shulchan, everything was taken to Bavel in exile. I think that it says in a different talk that they used to take the Shartitus that we have today with the menorah. It was, uh, I think it said there in, in Greek um, uh, or in, in their language, it said that the Jews were, were, were sent captive and they used to take the Jewish people to the gate where the picture is of uh, them carrying the menorah and say, made them look at it and disgraced them and, you know, brought their morale down. Anyhow, what we want to discuss at this point right now is that there's a the Rambam introduces us in Perik, in this first chapter introduces the the different components of the Beit Hamikdash. He says there's different vessels that need to be there and enumerates them. I think there's seven or eight, and then he also says that the building, the structure of the building, needs to have different compartments, three compartments, and so on. He doesn't mention anything about the Aaron when he, he speaks of the vessels. Then when we go to Perik, uh, there's the, there's two categories in when he, he lists them and then he you know goes in detail. When he goes in detail, Bet and Gimel, the chapter two and three discusses all the different vessels. Chapter th four and five discuss the structure of the building. Where does he in insert about the Aaron? He inserts it in the structure of the building, not regarding the vessels. So this leads us to think that he, the Rambam, even considers the Aaron being uh, not not only a utensil that you know you fulfill the mitzvah to say, but putting it by having this and it, it, it helps with the requirements of having the Shekhinah, the presence of God present, uh, be there. But it's more it's more in the fabric of the very structure of the building. If you want to have this building, there has to be an Aaron there because that's what the Pasuk wrote in this in the Parashat Ruma. It says, that I will I will I will be there, I'll be present there, I will meet you there. My voice 
Kadosh Baruch Hu saying the voice will come out of the bench neck Ruvim. So he's almost saying that 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 place is becoming becoming the um, the critical that 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 place becomes the uh, that meeting point and that that basically is the, the key ingredient. That's everything else is ingredients, but it, but this is the critical piece that makes it makes the presence of Hashem there. So this is a um, interesting idea. Now, where do we, where could we develop this idea more? Because we find the Rambam writes, uh, goes on to a very, very um, fascinating piece, but it's seeming, we don't, seemingly a little bit, um, he almost goes out of his way to give you a piece of history. So what is it? Uh, I'm going to read from inside. The the time the Ban Shlomo Amalek built the first Bet Hamikdash, and he knew in the in, he knew in the future it's going to be destroyed. So what did he do? Bana ba makom nignos ba haron the mata. He built uh, he built tunnels. He built like um, in the depth of the of the ground, matmoniot amukot, very very deep parts in the grounds, but akal kalot, and also very windy place that you're able. That was part of the structure that they had these inner um, deep passages of that were very very windy and that was a place that you were able to diagnose to bury the Aaron. And then he continues and it says the Yoshiao Amelech, the King Yoshio, Tziva the Gonzoba Mokom he did, he commanded that there it should be buried, the Aaron should be buried where Shlomo uh, you know arc uh, built it built that place that it should be buried. And then it says of the Pasuk, <laughs> So basically saying the sons of the Devim, he told them, go place it in the place that Shlomo Melech said to do that. And from now on, we don't have the 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 the, the, the weight on the shoulder because now it's buried Aaron with the staff of Aaron. And and then they did not come back in the second temple, and then he continues. <laughs> that was in the first Beit Mikdash. There was a way to correspond. They had um, different, whatever you were able to. It, it lit up, however it was, and you were able to ask questions, and it would give you answers in Ruach Hakodesh that didn't happen in the second bite. The problem with this is because a few problems. Number one, the Rambam doesn't mention anything that you do not need to know. Um, this is absolutely not necessary to know because it doesn't have any ramifications for actions, not now, not in the future. Second thing is, the Rambam goes out of his way to not mention anything that's not explicit in the previous, in the sources of the Talmud or the Mishnah, or the Brisa. And to the point where, he, if he thinks of something that he's important, he will mention it, but he will mention it only by hint, and he will not say it split straight up. Third, this is not something that's even agreed upon. There's a machloket in the Gemara of Yomah. Some people say that the Beit Hamikdash was taken, sorry, the Aaron was taken to Babel, and over here he's saying straight out he was buried. Why? There was no, there was no, there was no ruling. There was no decision. Why is he going out of his way to say it? So, the way this is really. A play. This this piece could explain us. Could be explained by, based on what we said earlier. The Rambam's vision of the Aaron is that it's part of the structure of the building. It's not just another utensil, and therefore he's not he's not he's not engaging in this topic because it has ramifications of act, in, in in action. It's more that it's it's describing to you what the structure is. When you need to explain the halacha of the Rambam, the structures of the Beit Hamikdash, he's telling you this. Shlomo Melech had this in the foresight that it's going to be destroyed. He did not do this on his own, you know, own, in, own initiative. He, it was a matter of knowing that it's going to be destroyed and that this, this is going to be the way that we're, we're going to have two in two separate places where the, the Aaron should be. There's one place that should be in the open, one place that should be in the form of a concealed way. So too with the and that's why he he combines the Urim Tumim with it that Urim Tumim existed both be, both in the first and the second Beit Hamikdash. It wasn't like it was missing; it was just not in the most expressive way. So too with the Aaron, more so. He's saying that Yoshiyahu Melech was the one. Okay, so let's continue. So Shlomo Melech built it, 
planned it. So that was part of the general grand scheme of the structure of the Beit HaMikdash, is that there's going to be two places that the Beit that the Aaron should be able to be second. The Ramon continues and he, and he goes out his way to say, who's the one that commanded it to be put in the Gniza, put in, in that, in those, in those, um, windy passageways it was Yoshiao in the time of Yoshiao the Jewish people weren't in a point of distress they weren't in a point where the enemies were stronger than them actually in reverse who did he tell to put it Bnei Levi it says in Chazdei David in, in, in the Yerushalmi it says that that, that they, they came the enemies came and sieged the place and then he had to bury itself now here he's saying in reverse he's saying that they did it in the time that they were that had the upper hand they did it with the Bnei Levim they placed it there it wasn't a matter of distress that they needed to hide it anywhere so this all tells us that there's a piece of the Beit HaMikdash, the structure, the very structure, not only the dirt, but the very structure of the Beit HaMikdash is existing forever. And it's not like, because this place never never changed. And this tells us even more so that the, the, the set, that there's a common piece, common thread between the first and second and third Beit HaMikdash. Is this place, this structure of the Beit HaMikdash is not only that it's holy, not, it's there and existing and it, will, it remains like that. And this seeming this draws similarities to how Tchiat Metim is going to happen. We know that we're going to, that the dead are going to rise in the time of the Motam Mashiach, but it's not that it's going to rise out of nothing. It's not going to be thin air. There's going to be new people. It's going to be that there's going to be a piece of the bone that never disintegrated, and that bone is going to be able to develop further into an entire existing person's body. And this is the the beauty. Of the Shlomo Melech. But Shlomo Melech is in the midst of the Simcha. He knows there's going to be a, a destruction. But that's not to him when he's looking at destruction. He knows that destruction is going to bring about the second and the third Beit HaMikdash. So to him, this is the like his foresight is that they, he's built, he's building it for the longest game and for the big, for the ultimate building because he is creating. He's creating a framework that this Beit HaMikdash could stand also the, the the destruction for the sake of there to be the everlasting building in the future. This could also be learned out from how the Rambam learns. The Rambam uses three terms. Um, uh, the Rambam uses the words... Um, Matmoniot amukot va'akalkalot. Matmoniot amukot means that very deep in the ground. A kalkalot means that it's very, very, very zigzag. So the meaning he intended, he made it this way, in a form of your hint. You could say a kalkalot is what the 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 the, the, the twists and turns. That's referring to the yehudi that needs to do the tshuva. And what is why does he? What what happens when a person does the tshuva? The matmoniot amukot, the the depths of his heart, the the depths of his being is expressed and brought out. And what is the? And that's when is that brought out? That's brought about when the Aaron is specifically in that place of hiding, and that's going to be, uh, and that's what the Shlomo Melech intended is when he, you put the Aaron there, and there's going to be a destruction. But that destruction you bring out the most depths of the Yehudi, and that will bring about which is the service of Tshuva, that will bring about the 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 the, the everlastingness part of the Beit HaMikdash that's going to be fully expressed in the third Beit HaMikdash.